All right. So another role reversal reaction. But this people should see coming because this has been this way for this entire season. Will likes House of Dragon right now way more than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's I like know, I know it's a good show. Don't twist my words. I'm still this is one of the best shows on TV. I totally understand that. That being said, I'm very curious as about the deep discussion Will wants to have because I'm like, eh, I, I don't things happened and some of the conversations were cool, but I don't know. It just felt like let's get to the finale. <laughs> <laughs> I, and that will lead to a whole other point of this whole season has been okay, let's actually have the war start. I mean, I'm tired. I'm tired of this like Dance of the Dragons has begun. Has it? Has it? I understand. Renice died. I get it. But still, like, I feel like we've just been, we've just, this has just been, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Pillow talk. Okay. Uh, well, this, this isn't the big thing, but, but go ahead, Will. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, so it's to, to paraphrase Masaria, there's more, way, more than one, and I think I said this last week, there's more than one way to tell a war story. And I just, I don't know. I think, I, I don't know. We, I think we had the same thing happen with us with, with Shogun this, this season two, with two of the best shows on television this year. And um, where I think my level of excitement is a little, a little higher than yours. Uh, I'm not that I agree. You, you definitely do like the show. It's not that you don't, but, uh, I, I, I just felt that this week's episode really was a good pay. It was a, a further payoff of, of the story of the small folk and also just the overarching absurdity of why we're having, you know, why, why is King's Landing and Westeros getting destroyed over, over a family squabble that, um, over, 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 over a crown that, you know, the Damon himself, whenever he's having these visions of, of Viserys is like heavy, heavy as the head, you know, has to carry this crown and it just crushes you. So, I mean, it's just, and, and I think, what this episode did for me was just really uh, w- one of the one of the things that stood out with with the discussion with with Team Black uh, in particular was uh, as they were were trying to get the put the all call out to execute Jace's plan, even though you know we saw the the, the failure of it last week. It, uh, it you know, we you know we're seeing how the how how really how intelligent the dragons are as far as you know who's really in control here is this is it the people or is it is it the dragons and 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 and, and the whole political the whole juxtaposition of the you know the common folk the small folk and 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 the highborn well class. yeah yeah like i before before you continue to go on uh, and then we have to circle back i don't want to get too too yeah. ha- um, far from this is um like i knew you were going to bring up this conversation because it is one of the best parts of this episode mm-hmm. uh, is the conversation between J- jace and his mom yeah because like let's not mistake jace has actually brought this idea to her and mm-hmm. now his realization, the moment that Adam comes to Dragonstone and is lowborn, suddenly he's a dragon. So therefore, like nobody says it, he's a bastard. Yeah. <laughs> like, yep. like there's there's no way. And and then I I really it's a great moment because it's something, a conversation that these two characters clearly have never had mm-hmm. and never had to have. But the acknowledgement of him acknowledging like who his father is to her. Um, my only quibble is I wish, I wish there was more she said in response, yeah. but I don't think, I think she was completely caught off guard. But at the same time, 
she's absolutely right because she's like, I'm sorry. I love you. I, I can, I can see where you're coming from, but no, <laughs> <laughs> we have no choice. Yeah. And, and let's not mistake. You've pointed out the little choice I've had. So we're going to yeah. stick with this and we're going <laughs> to kill some people while doing it because there ain't no way all of them are going to survive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it's, and it's true. I, I think that that was a very good, and she herself even had a problem at, I believe at some point in this episode with like this idea that, that the people who are no longer part of the bloodline can suddenly be dragon riders. And then I love, I love Maris's like response to, and it's just like, Aren't you fighting your brother? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sorry I like nailed it. Yeah. Uh, that's what I love that scene. No, I know. And it's because you're talking about not only blood, which honestly blood does ble- um bring a sense of loyalty, but mm-hmm. in this universe and in specifically for this family, power is heavier than the blood itself. And and so 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 any if you go to Starks Starks like oh yeah it's all about the blood but mm-hmm. and the loyalty there for their family and that okay T- the Lannisters coin <laughs> <laughs> money 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 <laughs> <laughs> but but I and I I I think that's good um you you brought up the um the payoff of the small folk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. You're not wrong when you say that. But my only problem is, is that like, well, duh, we've been knowing that that was going to happen. Like, Adam just got a dragon. You think that the other people we randomly have been introduced to are not going to get a dragon? Like, like we knew that. And and I and I have been on TikTok and I have seen information about the lineage and more importantly the dragons they both Ulf and um and Hugh end up with and yeah. how if only there was a way to have explained that over the season because i think i think the fact that um Hugh yeah. ends up with G- king Jesseris's uh dragon yeah. Jaceris is the father of H- Hugh's mom, yeah. who he he disgraced and and just threw out, and she became a prostitute. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. He abandoned. He disowned her or something. And, yeah. and King Jaharis is the former king before Viserys. So yeah. so like choices were made, and he probably disowned her because only heir female goodbye. So, so the fact that he ends up with with that dragon, but what like that that is such a fascinating thing. But I only know that because I was on TikTok. <laughs> no, it was in the episode. I mean, he. I mean, he. I mean, who did no, no, say? No, no, no. The fact that just he did not. He he explained like you. My point is okay. I kn- I know he explained, kind of, and alluded to his mom was, but he didn't outright like clearly say. And 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 I'm sorry, you've met the Targaryens. Like there are 15 people named Jaceris. I don't I, I don't feel like he ever really talked about him. No, but he did say. I mean, he basically. I mean, as far as like, I, mean, I, I know with I know with Ulaf, they were very they were more, very clear that he was a, a bastard of Balin. Yes. Um because he you know because Balin's is uh Damon and Viserys' father. I actually I actually did print out my I've been talking about it all season. I finally did I finally did like put out the family tree for the for this show because it's keeping track of all these Aegons and Viserys yeah. and Viserys. Yeah. I actually yeah. did pencil I, I and I did I, I was aware too as far as um I guess Balon was um I guess Sarah was his his wife at least as far as the TV show. Um 
and then mm-hmm. uh, um, I mean, excuse me, his other daughter. Excuse me, I'm looking at my. Fa- I had to pencil that one in because she hadn't been added to the uh, the family tree line <laughs> with the chart that I have here. It only goes up through episode six. So, <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, uh, Jacera, uh, Jeff Harris's daughter that you that you referenced being a prostitute. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, his mother, but uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you there that it did. They, they, you know, he did say he, that you know, he had, he had a silver haired mother, which uh, you know, clearly makes you know, very clear that uh, she's a Targaryens and, and Targaryens love to fuck, whether there's men, men, men or women in the, in the in the family, they they all are they all have little bastards running around all throughout Westeros. Um, but They're um, so- yeah. And that's like, one, I, yeah, for sure. Yeah, look at Corliss. <laughs> well, 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 Corliss, yeah. But I, um, in watching this episode and even talking about it, I mean, the strong points of this episode are talking about like the quote unquote bastard storylines. And mm-hmm. if uh, going back to Game of Thrones, John freaking Snow was a bastard. Right, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not. And so it's it's interesting how the this sh- these shows and this universe it's all about the power and it's mm-hmm. all about lineage and legacy and all of that and yet some of the characters who end up being our heroes and our protagonists are bastards mm-hmm. and um, which is so interesting when you're talking about a story that delves deep into family and power. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I mean, you brought up before Damon's vision in this episode, and it's a vision of um, Viserys again. Um, but the Viserys that we kind of ended on and and it, I think this is the first scene, I would argue, or the first vision scene, that it's very clear of why why they're showing this, because it happens right after he really has his first, like we, Damon's kind of a, quote, older gentleman at mm-hmm. this point. Yeah. But this is the first time when he's clearly put in a political position yeah. of power and has to make a decision to to agree with Oscar which shout out to that kid because that yeah. kid some impressive acting yep. and just just really owned that whole scene and the fact that he's like playing off of off of Matt Smith I mean just hats off to him bravo For sure. yeah um but to then have Damon have to sacrifice that guy who basically was his only ally in the Riverlands and then be like, yeah, I told you to do that. So now you're going to pay for my sins because I have to agree with these guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't. I can't. Damon's like, yep, I got it. Yeah. I don't. Oh, yeah. I, I need but your swords. <laughs> it's telling that then he immediately goes into this vision with Viserys and Viserys like now that you've experienced this side of things where this power leads you to actually kill those allies Mm -hmm. for political reasons like it's not are you sure this is what you want i i really like that i i feel like up until this point the visions i agree have been a bit like vision for vision's sake (laughs) Mm. Um, well, I think I, I disagree with you there. I mean, because to your point, those earlier visions, the, the payoff comes with what we what Damon experiences in this episode, which you just shared. I don't know. I don't I, I don't think that that's true. I feel like the payoff is within the episode that they occur because they and and it's it. I don't think those visions necessarily build up to this. I mean, all the visions are are a a visualization of the internal demons that are going on, this internal war that is happening within him. 
um, partly under the wizardy of Alice. Yeah. Um, so it's it's basically like he's on mushrooms. Yeah. And he's going through a grieving process. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, guess so. <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> so, so I think what I was saying, what I was trying to um, articulate was maybe not visions for vision's sake, but I felt like they were getting a bit too long mm. and just a bit too, you kind of already knew that. Mm. Mm. I don't mm. really want to see you have sex with your dead mom. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was a bit much. <laughs> I like how they reveal that at the very end and like, now we'll let the viewers leave. And it's just like, whoa, what did I just spend five minutes watching? So yeah. I, I like. I I'm glad that we didn't spend too much time with Damon in this episode, just yeah, because I, I feel like he's on such he's been on such a different story mm-hmm. that. Sometimes it takes me out of what else is going on. But arguably, this episode, the person who I have no idea what was... I I know what was going on with her, but at the same time, I'm like, what are we doing? (laughs) What is happening here? Why couldn't you just let Olivia Cook take the day off? (laughs) Um, is is the whole cleaning of Allison. And it's... I don't know if if that was time well spent. I think we could have spent time with some other characters like B- Bela, right? Bela, who's at mm-hmm. the eerie. She, yeah, yeah. she we we get Hugh every all of the male small folk get get a dragon before Bela. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Spoiler alert, Bela's gonna get the biggest one, but come on. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, yeah. I mean that. Uh... I, I agree with you with Allison. Uh, I mean, whenever the, the funniest thing about that se- the scenes with Allison was whenever uh, Sir uh, the night that was with her, I can't remember his name, but uh, <laughs> when I heard that voice, I immediately thought of One Piece because he was Luffy, Luffy's grandpa. Oh, smart! Yeah, I did not. I, I totally have not. Which <laughs> they've started filming. Yeah, yeah. Season two, so. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that voice. I was like, that voice is so familiar. And I like, oh, I did go. I was like, I think that's the guy from One, Pl- One Piece. And sure enough, I looked with IMDb and it was, but I digress. But I agree. And, it, and it, honestly, that's that's shows you how much I was invested with what was going on with Allison in this episode. You and me both. I was like, yeah. Allison has been has been so interesting to me throughout this season. Um, but but this was not. <laughs> this yeah. was like. What and it's and it's it's not because of Louis Cook. It's no, no. You you also the 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 rats like all that was cool. But when you have a a section like this, all I can think about is especially as we continue to just get taunted with this dance of the dragons. Is can't we spend it with some other characters? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can well, I, I? There, there are because there's some really interesting things going on, especially on Team Green. I mean, Aegon, yeah. um, Aegon, this Aegon and Laris, which to kind of go back a little bit to to my whole point about the bastards and those disabled individuals. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he's not technically disabled, but Tyrion Lannister, one of the most popular characters in all of Game of Thrones. Okay. Yep. yep. Midget. And yep. and yep. and yet and now we have Lars, who Lars is is not I'm not comparing him to T- Tyrion at all, but at the same time he he's handicapped and mm-hmm. now he's kind of I don't know if this is the right word, but grooming Aegon and trying to get him up and going yeah, because yeah. they can be allies um, yeah, against yeah. Aemond. And it's and it, there's some interesting things happening there. But I also wonder if I find that that's appealing because they're they're telling it at the right pace. We're not getting too much, but we're also not getting too little. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the rehab that he was that he's been doing with Aegon, uh, and especially when when we, we we're seeing that happen, but then also whenever they learn about uh, Adam taking um, yeah. sea smoke and the yep. whole conversation. And so, and I love the way they played that scene because on the one hand, it was sort of like, is, was Laris like not, you know, it was like the game of telephone whenever the guy was telling him about it. <laughs> he was like, but, or, or, you know, so was Laris like, didn't want to tell Eamon about it because he just didn't trust it or to your, you know, to what we we're just discussing was he, you know, because he is helping Aegon rehabilitate from his injuries, he he, he doesn't want a- Aemon to know so that if by some chance they right. are out there in the field of battle, uh, Aemon you know, may get slain by, you know, the, the, the increasing number of dragons on Team Black. Well, Aegon, or Aemon, he, at this point, is thinking he still has the advantage. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, which, and and I agree with you. Um, that scene was well executed because you can't. Nobody fully knows except for mm-hmm. the writers and the showrunner and yep. the actor, um, but nobody else. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> the viewers are left questioning, questioning if Lars believes it or not. And and I, I agree that's that's a very well acted scene and and written too. Yeah. Um. I don't because I don't even know coming yeah, from about like like yeah. hmm. because at first he's like huh but then he, when he figures out it's the game of telephone it's like I don't know. like it's a yeah. hard thing to know uh, to believe. Unless you until you see it, and then you get the yeah. shot of Ulf coming in on Silverwing, which initially I was like, "Oh, if you freaking idiot! Like <laughs> you're telling me you f- you managed to find yourself with the dragon, and you go to King's Landing." Yeah. Also, again, <laughs> this episode just proved a complaint I've had since what episode one. Like, why are these two places so close together? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, I've seen. They are relatively close because I know we because even like with the plan of getting the small folk when they put the call out to to the Targaryen bastards to yeah. go, go to Dragonstone, you know, Alan was a part of that. You know, they, they did a quick little shot there of him helping to execute that plan. So it was just like, yeah, you know, and, you know, with the boats, you know, I, I, I do. I, I, I know Dragonstone and King's Landing are relative neighbors, but you know I, I need to look at a map of Westeros to see like the scale because I've seen things. I've seen people say anything from like fifty miles to like to four hundred. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So um, if, if listeners, if you have a, if you could like point us out to a good source that uh, tells us how far they are in relation apart from in relation to one another, we would greatly appreciate that. Yeah. What yeah. what were you, what were your thoughts when you saw Ulf um take Silverwing to King's Landing? Oh, that, that was that that probably would have been me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in his defense, he he can't really drive. <laughs> he can't drive. He just hit the lottery, you know. Uh, especially because because you know because he even what I liked about it was he whenever they were in King's Landing and and they were all sitting in a bar, he was starting to doubt. You know, he was questioning whether or not he even like was a a Targaryen, you know, bastard, and 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 so whenever he, whenever the whole scene with the whole red sewing uh, played out, so I guess anything that has red in their title, I guess <laughs> expect a lot of <laughs> expect a lot of death <laughs> in dramatic fashion uh, with this show. Um, Whenever that all went down in the in the hold with uh, Vermithor, uh, and then he like falls down and you know comes across uh, uh, was it Silverwing, that uh, yeah it it, it uh, I, I like the way they, they they did that and then his reaction of just like I'm just gonna take a joyride with this thing um, was 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 what I, well, like I said it's something I would do if I if I hit the right. lottery and like one I- dragon yeah. 
I I'm just I question um, because at the end, like Eamon does fly out after him yeah. um, and comes upon Dragonstone, and you have Reyna already standing out there. And to me, I think the intent is to left leave the viewers with no, that was an intentional joyride. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it was. Uh, yeah, See, I, think- I do. There was something on her face, like she she was not just standing out there for the sake of it. No, she. She knew, like, to me, because they also had another dragon, like, multiple dragons behind behind yeah. her. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. It, was, it, was, it felt more like, oh, you came here. That's nice. I got a few of these now, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that, you're right. That could, it, it, it very well could have been planned. You're right. But I know, but it's funny with that scene, too, because when Aben saw those other dragons standing there in Dragonstone and he was, you know, he, you know, he, he, he had to like really, really pull Vagar back. Cause Vagar was like, fuck it. I'm going, I'm going in. I, I will upgrade it to decent chopping. And, 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 uh, Eamon was like, that was the first time. I think, I don't think we've seen Eamon actually have fear in his eyes like that. Uh, in, in, in the two, in the two seasons that we've, we've known this character. I mean, he was legit. Like, we got it was like peace out we got to get out of here so um i would have agreed with you but i did see a tweet go out that had a shot of amen and how he looked after he killed luke versus amen and how he looked after he um tried to kill agon yeah but i think the when he killed when he killed luke i don't think it was fear i think it was just like it was more like oh crap what is, what have i done well, to me, that's like a little bit of fear. I mean, like the fear of what you've done. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I could see that. Anyways, <laughs> like, like my my point point being is like, I I saw those, so so mm-hmm. I don't know if it's the first time. Yeah. Um, that we've actually seen fear. I think it's been a while though. I don't think I think maybe this is the first time in season two, but I think that he just he's like his uncle. Yeah. He doesn't understand the crown. Yeah. Um. And and but but it's also not like Renera does too. Right. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Right. I, well, but, she's she's yeah. I think she's but we've seen her mature into it better. You know. I think she and she's you know she has her kitchen and cabinet with Masaria as her hand to help her. Masaria's in her hand. Coil no, but I'm just, I know Corliss is her official hand, but then she has like what I mean by kitchen cabinet is like the people, you know, the she, it's like she may not be she can't sit at the council table, but she's just as much an advisor, more so. I think she's more of an advisor than her than her council at this point. Yeah, I just feel like friendships like those have gone in Renera in trouble in, in the past, being of royal court. So I don't. I I I agree she's maturing and she she's better than Eamon, but I I don't I don't know if she um is fully prepared for the crown either. And I think I think that's what they've subtly done this season is a lot of Renera's uh struggle is mirrored because of her her struggle in her marriage yeah, yeah to her yeah. uncle yeah <laughs> yeah, I, yeah i would agree with that <laughs> man you, you know maybe this is just an incest thing like and that's why they can't trust those of the main bloodline because the main bloodline it's all you know, like it's inner anyway i'm not gonna go <laughs> <laughs> any further <laughs> all i'm saying the families who don't incest they don't seem to have this problem okay uh, <laughs> they yeah, don't yeah. breed and they don't have this problem that's, they that's don't it. they don't yeah a little, little more stability in their yeah. mental, yeah. mental a stability bit more. there <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah all right um anything else about the penultimate episode of season two I uh, know just uh, there, there uh, nothing about the episode, but there was another uh, release of uh, scenes for the finale. That was, I guess, there was a uh, making our way around social media. So be careful. I think HBO is working hard to to get them struck stricken from like all the all the various platforms. But uh, yeah, if you don't want to get spoiled, then uh, 
don't uh you know be very very careful as you tread on tiktok or facebook or you know whatever social media platform of choice you've had your warning now will tell our listeners where they can find you Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me there, too, at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew there at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>